Hey guys, welcome to the Pitch Dark Podcast. Uh, joining us for our 40th episode. Uh, today we are doing some podcast shit. <laughs> but uh, we're going to be talking about all kinds of random stuff, but we're going to be talking about some true crime stuff and our take and on it. And yeah, but um, we're going to be doing that. And of course, joking around about stuff and probably going to go off on different things, but because that's what we do. And that's what we do best here at the podcast show. <laughs> the podcast show. The podcast show. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh. <laughs> but uh, Kyle's been doing some research. Uh, uh, even looking up like stuff here in New Mexico, right? Yeah, so I went on a deep dive the past couple of days of like um, some true crime you know, history of New Mexico. And, you know, everybody knows about, you know, the... The Mesa bodies and all that that they found, you know, they know about that. And, uh, you know, not a lot of people know about the Toy Box Killer, but some of you that do, that, that know that he's from New Mexico. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a famous case here. But, you know, there's a lot of cases that weren't really talked about, weren't really brought to light. Um, and, you know, that's basically where I got uh, interested in is seeing these um blogs about um past crimes that happened in new mexico and that nobody ever really talks about um you know new mexico has always talked about the beautiful landmarks the natures that nature scenery that we have yeah. here you know and some of us do know that albuquerque has a real bad crime history yeah, they have a dark past too <laughs> yeah and yeah. it's kind of funny how like movie stars like come over here to retire yeah. Like, there's so many in Santa Fe. Yeah, like, uh, for f- one person that I know, I don't know if they still live here, but Julia Roberts and her brother, uh, I can't remember his name, they they both had, have or had houses in Taos. Yeah. You know, and, um, uh, you know, everybody knows that Epstein's house was here. Yeah. You know, everybody <laughs> knows that shit. Oh, yeah. You know, um, so, you know. This, this is weird. Yeah. And, and, you know, that always brought up into my mind, like, um, you know, we're Native American, you know, and back between like, I want to say like the 80s to like early 2000s, there was a lot of missing Native American women that were going around. So uh, that was, you know, yeah. happening. So I figured, you know, in my mind, you know, my dumbass little brain was thinking, hey, what, what if Epstein had something to do with it? Oh, shit. Like, what if he was like really into like Native chicks? Native chicks. Oh, he just wanted a savage on his lap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, that's, I always thought about that because you know, nobody ever knew that that guy was here. Nobody ever knew yeah, like what no he one, was into. Yeah, no one ever like said like, oh, like, like there's a creepy white guy. <laughs> Nowadays, with social media, with how quickly news can spread, you know, nobody really. None of that stuff was ever shared to. I guess the majority of the public. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, when we go back and, and and deep dive into these like stories and stuff, it always trips me out. Like knowing that I was a little ass kid that was possibly gonna get stolen by some, you know, some random ass person. You, you know, giving him a massage, bro. Dude, that would have been crazy cool. I know, but you could have got money for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like I'm gonna, I'll massage some old man's cheeks. Just, some old man's cheeks. What the fuck? I wanted a PS2 at the time. Oh, well, well, that's how we got our shit. Oh, oh that's just, how the cameras were here. Oh, no, yeah, well, these kids nowadays are soft, man. Oh, oh they're oh, soft. Oh, man. God. <laughs> <laughs> shit, man, we used to rob that guy in the van with the candy. You know? Yeah, oh, man, uh, like shit. Like, <laughs> who had to jerk off? I don't what know. the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> 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 yeah, so like, you know, going back and reading the history of New Mexico and mm, not more of the, like the um, the known history of New Mexico, but like the the dark crimes, the the, you know, the murder cases, the missing cases, all of that stuff is what interests me about New Mexico because there's a dark side of every state, of every city in the United States, the world. You know, there's always something that's always hidden under the rug and nobody really wants to talk about and that's the stuff that interests me mm-hmm. isn't uh josh Rowan live here too or is that his name the guy that plays fucking thanos 
So I don't. Uh, I don't really know. I. I honestly. I think he does. I think he he has like a ranch here or something. I because uh, the only, the last person that I honestly knew about having a house here was Julia Roberts, and that was like yeah. when I found that I was like two thousand and fifteen around there. That's when I found that out. What is that show that he does? It's like where he finds he he in the movie he has a ranch too, and he has like um. What is it called? Like he goes into his ranch and he finds <coughs> this like pit that's in his thing, but you, you can throw stuff in it. It's like a bottomless pit. Yeah. Are you gonna look it up? Yeah. See if he uh, yeah. lives here or not. Yeah. Yeah, because I I'm pretty sure he. Does. I'm not sure. I, I could be wrong though. Is he? Is, I hope he does. Cause that fucking owes me money. Shut the fuck. Outer range is that? Yeah, what you're talking outer, about? yeah, okay. outer. Yeah, that one's that's a good fucking show. You check it out. It's a weird show. Yeah, so Outer Range was filmed in New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, northern New Mexico. Um, it doesn't... And there's no articles that say anything about him living here. It just talks about how he enjoyed filming up in Northern New Mexico, uh, the Outer Range and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and they, how he, they employed over 2,000 New Mexicans, you know, which is, which is dope because you don't really see that kind of stuff nowadays in, you know... In the film industries, there's a lot of people who are already just tied in, and they'd rather have working with them. But when you see uh, film industries giving, um, you know, normal people like us a job and, and you know a time to be on film or whatever, that's cool shit. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. It's cool, yeah. <laughs> like I always see those like audition things. Yeah. And I'm always like, man, it'd be cool, but I get nervous, dude. I yeah. don't think I could ever do it. Yeah, I always. <laughs> I always see those ones where they're looking for a Native American yeah, actor. And I'm like, too. they're looking for those yeah. ones from South Dakota, the, no, tall, yeah, with long look, hair. They're looking like for a Raz motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, you want like, a fat fucking funny dude, motherfucker? They think we're like, we're, well, like, I'm like part, like, I'm Hispanic too, but yeah. like, we don't, like, you're full blooded, but we don't look yeah, like it. I, I, I've gotten mistaken for being Mexican my whole life. I've never, ever had anybody tell me, you look Native. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't know why you don't look like <laughs> like, you, yeah, <laughs> like you should have like like the fucking braided hair. And Shut the hair. fuck! Up. <laughs> I used to have long hair way back yeah. in the day. But even back then, you didn't look native though. You just looked nah, like a Mexican, Mexican dude. With long hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I I I always thought about it because back when I was born in '93, that um, that's when babies were getting stolen kidnapped a lot and, oh, and they were getting switched yeah, around yeah. yeah so you never know well, i remember I switched when when you were born when you're still i remember switching you with somebody well, I <laughs> <was> <laughs> God, God, God. one years old yourself <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah uh, yeah so back when i was born i remember my mom told me this story when when she was born they they had to give her a bracelet oh yeah they had to match yeah, yeah. yeah it was like a magnet and in order for me to be checked out those bracelets had to match and you still wear it now right oh yeah uh-huh. oh, oh, it's around my ankle now bro <laughs> it's all tight as fuck it's right here it's all t- oh, god oh. damn it's all purple what the fuck hey, bro my skin just morphed over it bro <laughs> it's all purple as fuck yeah uh, I, I i think i remember right when she was telling me that of course she had one and i don't remember if grandpa think, had I one i think they do i'm not sure and then but i remember my auntie had one and so they were the only ones that were allowed to take me from the nursery out and walk around, and that was it. That was, that's just in case someone fucking switched babies for some reason. Because it was just like that summer, my mom said that fucking they had just had a, like a report here in New Mexico of like six babies that's that were crazy. taken. Yeah, like just taken. Yeah, Holy like shit. taken from the hospital because somebody just went in there and said that they want to hold their yeah, their child, and then they shit, walked out yeah. with the kid. Yeah. So there's no saying like maybe I switched. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, but you do look like Grandpa though. You have the like, same, fucking, <laughs> especially the ears. Yeah, I I get that a lot. Like my ears yeah. are fucking huge. Like if I see you from this side, I'm like Grandpa. Well, shut the fuck <laughs> up, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like, oh, it's you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> get down, oh, I'm just sitting with Grandpa. Oh, oh it's not mine. No. Oh, I thought. <laughs> Doing a special edition podcast. Special oh. edition. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, and, and there was a lot of crime back back then with stolen kids. I mean, of course, that was like the thing back in the day was either kidnapping kids or 
getting away with murder. <laughs> it feels like the trend, bro. It, it pretty much <laughs> was, bro. Like, like. Imagine if you had TikTok went like, ah, I got your baby. Oh, God damn it. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, today's trend. We're going to go to the hospital and steal a baby. Five easy steps. So. <laughs> <laughs> Learn how to, how to get a baby. <laughs> for free. Oh, oh for free. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. I, see, that's my thing is like, there's some people that. That want babies, and there's some people that don't want babies. Can you imagine if you didn't want the baby, but you just like oh, thought shit. it'd be a quick come up? Oh shit! Uh, back, and, fuck, I don't know. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> back then, a lot of like people just ditch babies too. Yeah, yeah. Because like, yeah. it, it was so hard for like there's no DNA tracing mm-hmm. and stuff like that, so it was just like, oh, is this a, a baby in the trash or something? Yeah, like um, if I could find an article, but this was a long like a couple years ago when I read it. Um, some lady had found out that she was um, a victim of kidnapping and that her parents that she thought were her biological parents were her actual kidnappers. Oh, oh yeah, then, I've seen something. Yeah. yeah, and then when she did that 23andMe, uh, yeah. she found her actual parents. That's crazy. And then when they reunited together, the parents wanted to press charges against those people, but she didn't want to because she considered them her parents. Yeah. So it was just like this big old like. That's weird. Like it was it was a shit show. I remember watching like a couple of um, YouTube documentaries about it. That's crazy. And <clears throat> and like they were pretty much like calling her like like cl- clinically insane because she, it was like kind of like how um, what do they call it with a kid what do they call it the uh, with a kidnap victim ends up falling in love oh yeah with the kidnapper there's a term for it yeah, yeah. even like uh, like rape victims yeah yeah they that, fall in that, love with the rapist they yeah. said that it was a really really strong case of that yeah, that's crazy and that she she basically took them in as their family that's crazy and that even though she knew the truth that it was like it wasn't something that uh, would bother her yeah it's, i think it's just because like she grew up just thinking that you know so yeah. it's no different yeah and that's what i always thought like what if one of us was actually a kid that was stolen? Oh, shit. And that, you know, we were just taught to accept it. And then what if one day your actual biological parents came up and said, hey, you're my kid, you were stolen. That's like, crazy. Like, I, I couldn't imagine the mind fuck I'd go through with that. Damn, and then you find out their other daughter is someone you used to date. Oh, what the oh, fuck? Oh, 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 that'd be some crazy shit. Your right sister? There. Oh, you're fucking your sister? Oh. <laughs> God, uh, oh damn there's too many cases of that uh, going around huh. yeah because there's another case where i think the mom was dating somebody and she had a son huh. and then he kidnapped the son and she had no idea where he took her and he lived with his stepdad for like years and years and then but what's pissed me off is when they interviewed the mom like, yeah we had no idea where he went like, he just took him and I was like, you just gave up on looking for him? Like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, that's weird. Like, like, you must not really give a shit. Like, because they were still in the same state, I think. Yeah. So it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> or like that one, I don't know if you heard about this one, about that, um, I could be wrong, but it was this, this uh, Spanish family, who, I, I want to say it was in California, they had said that their son was missing for years, yeah. and he all of a sudden came back. Yeah. And... He was like, you know, people were saying that he wasn't really gone, that the mother just said he was gone, and yeah. she was having a relationship with the boy. What the fuck? Yeah, and that the the neighbor said that they constantly saw him coming in and out of the house, but every time, like, um, social services or, um, I don't know what um, the Child Protective uh, Agency is in California is called, but they would come out and go and like do an interview and see where maybe if she's seen him or anything yeah. and he would always just like take off he would never so be fuck. around in the area That's weird. and he'd just come back and like last year I, I if i remember right last year it was a big old fucking thing on tiktok and he finally came back and shit and then it, it just turned into this big old like big old mess of a story about how people were thinking that the mother was just lying the whole time to be involved in a relationship with their son. The yeah, it, it was such a fucked up story. Oh, man. Let me see if I can find yeah. it up real quick. This, uh, I don't know if he, did you ever watch or uh, like read about that, um, the Gypsy Rose thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit's crazy. I watched the fucking movie too. Yeah, um, a matter of fact, me and my fiance were watching that shit the other day. Um, 
that uh what the fuck is it called something yeah. with the flower or something like that i don't know some some shit yeah but i remember i was watching this that movie and i never yeah. knew about the fucking gypsy rose like i yeah. didn't ever know it was a big old thing like that what's crazy is that like there's so many opportunities where she could have just left uh yeah like even when her boyfriend came like she could have just left she didn't, she didn't have to kill her mom yeah they could have just got up and left you know just like just run away but I don't know. I just figured that she had to kill her mom or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Crazy fucking shit. What is the other one? Um, uh, the fuck's that other one? That one where they were saying that their daughter was... Because she was like... Uh, had dwarfism. And they were trying to say that she was like... She wasn't really... Oh, the, the one that movie the orphan's based off of? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, something Grace. I can't remember her name. I can't remember either. Uh, I watched that one too, and then she finally they did the rest of the documentary where she actually started talking to the, the actual people that are doing the documentary. Yeah, and she is she was eight years old. Yeah, she was eight and stuff. But I, it's weird because some of her neighbors were saying that she was like, like she would say that she was twenty two years old and she was like having sex with people. What and stuff. the fuck? Yeah, I'm like I don't know. So it's hard to like see who's telling the truth, who's not. You know? Yeah, I mean like <laughs> that's what freaks me out nowadays is like. Like, when you're starting off in a new relationship or you just go off on a one-night stand, like, are you sure that person's of age? You know what I mean? God, like, that's fucking scary. That, that's what freaked me out. freaks me out is, like, is, sure. you know, regardless if it's myself or someone that, of my family, like, are you sure they're of age? Are you sure oh, they're, like, they're not going to fuck you over? Like, they, could, they could even have a fake ID. You yeah. Know? Like, that's fucking scary. Yeah, that's one thing I've always thought about. It was like, what if you ended up messing around with somebody that was, like, young, and then they ended up, like, blackmailing you? Fucking like, what the hell. fuck would you do? Imagine all that stress, dude. That, like, I'd probably, that's probably the only time I'd probably like, all right, it's time. <laughs> yeah, you know, in all honesty, yeah, maybe. <laughs> because, shit, bro, like, you, I mean, going to prison ain't even fucking worth it at that point. Yeah, and, and then you'd even do anything. Yeah. Dude. Like, it was just like, fuck, I got tricked. Yep. For a trick. For a trick, for a trick. <laughs> <laughs> trick or treat, you know? No, for tricks or for cats. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. But yeah, like, uh, so that's, that's like, always something that I've always, like, you know, always talked to myself about or talked to, uh, like, my brothers or, you know, you or anybody about it. Just make sure you're, they're fucking, they're of age. No, shit, just double check. Yeah, triple oh. check shit at that point oh, because yeah. nowadays there's so many people getting thrown away in prison yeah. for false uh, you know, yeah, false accusations or whatever, or even if they're true accusations, you know what I mean? Like, that shit's crazy. Just like the uh, death metal band decapitated when they were going through all that shit, because they went on tour, and this girl was, like, a fan, and they, like, brought, I guess she was on the bus or something, and, and then after the show, she said that they raped her, uh -huh. and they took turns on her, and stuff like this, and then... They took the court. They they had to like end the tour because they're in like they are in jail until their trial and stuff because yeah. they're from out of the country. So they made sure they didn't leave the country. And then um, they're doing the trial, and then they found out that she's actually falsely accused someone else before. Oh shit! And then since the bus had cameras on it, there was no proof or anything like that. She 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 made it all up. Huh. And I was like, what the fuck? And then the guys didn't press charges back. They just wanted to go back home. I was like, damn, you guys. I would have charged for all the money Fuck that yeah. I, I lost for the tour, you know? Exactly. I would have fucking, not only would I would have pressed charges, but I would have fucking filed civil lawsuits mm -hmm. and get my money back, too. No oh, shit, but, like, every show that I was supposed to get paid, merch, yeah. too, like, everything that we lost out because of this. Yeah. Like, I, I want all that money out. Like, so, you can't, like, that, that'd be, like, one scary situation is, you know, that's, like, what I've always thought about going, like, and doing this is, like, what if we ever became... To that point where we were, like, famous enough to, like, uh, women has wanted to start coming around and stuff like that. Or men. Or men. No, I'm not fucking, you know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But at the same time, like, that's what I always thought of was, like, what if somebody said this, you know, something happened yeah. and it didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I worry about with the band, too. Like, I, I, I've been saying I wanted to get, like, one of those dash cams. Yeah. The one that records outside, inside. Just in case, you know. Yeah. Someone says, like, oh, they pulled me in the van or some crap, you know. Yeah. Just in case. Uh, I should just do that. But I mean, not only that, but if something were to happen and yeah. you weren't involved, but they say no, you were involved, Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? just like, like, I wasn't there. The fuck like, you me. saw the camera. It's right there. Yeah. You know, and that's, just, that's the one thing, like, now is, like, you know, to take 
uh, take advice from is make sure you always, you know, at least let someone know where you're going. You know, um, a word of advice, just make sure, you know, let at least someone you trust. If you're going out and do some stupid shit, you yeah. know, someone you trust. Someone that you know is going to answer the phone. Yeah, let them know, hey, you know, I'm going here. If I'm not back, that's yeah. where I was. Yeah, because I've had a close call where I, I felt like I was going to get, like, robbed or something. Yeah. Did I ever tell you that story? No. No? Okay, well, you're not going to hear it. Oh, fuck <laughs> you, <laughs> oh, fuck <laughs> me, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, actually, uh, there's this girl that, like, liked me and... She was she was like, we want to hang out? And I was like, sure. I was like, I never hung out with you before. And then um, she, she gave me, like, her address. And it went there. And it was, like, a kind of like a... It was on... What the fuck was it? I think it was on 2nd Street. You know where those, like, shitty apartments are? Like, like on the left side of the 2nd Street? Like, on the yeah. part going further down. It's, like, a it's pretty bad part. I got there. I was like, what the fuck is this place? And then and then I was like, I, like, mess, I, was like, I think I'm at the right place. And then they opened the door. And went in there, dude, and there's, like, a couple just passed out on the couch. What the fuck? She, she's, like, probably, she said, she eventually did, she told me she was on a three-day bender. All of it. She hasn't slept. Get down. And then her brother was, like, pacing back and forth and, like, was staring at me. And I was, like, I was, like, I didn't know all these people were here. She was, like, oh, yeah, we're just hanging out. And, and, um. The so the dude was trying to like he was like what's up dude like half like awake and yeah. and he was trying to give me to do cocaine or something he had like uh, yeah. A, yeah he had blow on the table and like, yeah we just been partying like we were you know and then all of a sudden they brought up like guns and stuff they're like yeah we have guns like you afraid of guns I was like no like cool like I don't know what to say. <laughs> and then they're like you want anything and she's like no he don't do anything like that but he's cool and then. And her brother kept like going into like where like one of the rooms I guess, huh. and then going back, and then on the top of the fridge he kept like getting something and then putting it back, huh. and then look at me and then walk away. He was like pacing back and forth, just staring at me, huh. and I was like, okay, this is fucking weird. And then I finally noticed what he was doing. He kept trying to, he kept grabbing a handgun, uh-huh. and like, and I was like, why is he staring at me? I was like, I was like, they're running out of drugs. They had me come over. I was like, oh fuck. Huh. I was like, I think they're gonna. And then they started talking about, oh, you got money, you know, huh. like you, you you have that nice car outside and like you, you're in a band. And I think we were still doing the podcast stuff back then, too. Oh, shit. I think it was. I don't remember. But and then they kept bringing up money, too. And I was like, oh, I'm OK. Like, I, I work. I don't know. <laughs> and then and I was like, fuck, I think they're going to fucking I really thought he was going to just pull the gun on me and tell huh. me to go to ATM or something. <laughs> And I was, like, fucking, like, I already kind of was reading the room. Because he kept doing it. Like, he was, like, nervous to do yeah. it. And he kept, kept, yeah, he kept excited. doing it. And then he kept, like, changing his mind or something. Yeah. And then I was, like, all right, all right. And I was, like, fuck. And then I text Cameron. Yeah. <laughs> I was all, Cameron, I need you to call me right now and tell me yeah, I have to go pick you up. Uh-huh. Do it right now. Like, now. And he was, like, and then he called. his all, hey. I was all that. And I was like, hey, what's up, man? What's up? He was all, I need a ride. I'm on, he said, some bullshit. Some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, I was like, right now? He was like, yeah, like right now. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm h- hanging out with somebody. She's all, she's all, he doesn't, she's all, he's not leaving. He's going to stay here. And I was like, and I was like, ah, like, and then I was like, all right, I'll be right there. And I was like, I got to go because I, I got to help my friend out. I guess he got stranded or something. Huh. Oh okay, all right. And he was like, "You don't have to go, man." And I was like, and "That was the first time you ever said anything yeah. to your brother." And I was like, oh, "I'm gonna go." I was like, "Here, yeah, I'll, I'll take off. I'm gonna take off." I was like, I'll, "I might come. I'll probably come back." And the, oh, cool, cool. Huh. And and then I went outside and I locked the door and I closed it. I fucking just ran to my car. Yeah, got in there, fucking just peeled out and took off. And then I called Cameron back and he was like. He was like, what the fuck was that all about? I was like, dude, I think I almost got fucking jacked. I was like, oh. <laughs> like, I, I, like, lured me in. I told him the whole thing, what happened. He was like, what the fuck? That sounds like it. I was like, yeah, that fucking was scary. I was like, I think you just saved my life. I was like, oh. yeah, dude. Uh, I've never been in a situation like that, but I've seen, like, some, like, suspicious shit. Like, um, you know that Love's right there on um, 6 and I-40? Yeah. Okay, so I pull over there to get some gas and because it's like before you get out of town, right? Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's like mid downtown. 
Like, oh, okay. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. It's like by the, the cultural center. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You, you like, it's like gets off the bridge and goes down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was there putting gas and I saw this lady putting gas and she was around like maybe 50, 40. And she, I mean, the way could tell is because her hair was peppered already. But she was putting gas and I noticed there was two people watching her put gas. One guy came around the corner, was trying to talk to her about something. The other guy came walking the other way to yeah. get on the other side of her car. And I saw it. So instincts is like, should I say something? Yeah. No, because I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get in trouble yeah. or get shot at or whatever. So what I did was I fucking honked. And I honked. That lady looked up and that dude just like swung around like so oh, fast. Shit. Like he was walking away. And uh, that, that guy looked at me and he gave me the dirtiest look ever. And they just walked off. Fucking and I was just like, fuck, did I just save that lady like yeah, from shit. getting robbed or saved her life? Because holy fuck. Cause, I mean... I've, you've always seen your lady like I don't know like my lady carries a purse so like she'll put everything on the passenger seat yeah. you know I always told her don't do that because yeah, when you get yeah. gas or something somebody's gonna open that door and just take it yeah take it yeah. Yeah. or to make sure your door's locked so you never know someone can sneak into your car yeah while you go inside to go pay for gas if you do that yeah exactly and that's one thing like I've always like I've always taken into consideration is when you're pumping gas, lock your doors. Put your mm -hmm. keys in your pocket, lock your doors. You know, whatever. Don't don't leave anything in your car that you know you would consider valuable, and or someone else could consider valuable. Because that, that, a lot of people don't say it happens, but in Albuquerque, it happens a lot more than than normal. Yeah, <laughs> in Albuquerque is pretty. It's getting. It feels like it's getting worse. Yeah. It's like I remember when we were. Kids, like, there was shit happening because my mom was so afraid of me getting kidnapped. Yeah. I was like, Mom, I'm ugly as fuck. Like, I'm a, like, yeah, I'm like, like, as I told my mom, was, who's going to steal a fucking fat native kid? Like, who's going to want that? Like, I'm going to cost him more than I am going to fucking give him. At the time, like, <laughs> San Diego was, like, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I was like, who's going to come out here? Just, like, it's so obvious. Like, because yeah. there's, like, everybody knows everybody's car. Yeah. I was like, it's gonna, obvious that someone's going to, we're going to know who it is. Yeah. Uh, my mom, <laughs> she was so like protect, like it would, just to go over to my friend's house. It was across the street. She would have to like watch me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember your mom being yeah. so fucking like overprotective. Yeah, like we would go to the mall and stuff. She'd yeah. be right behind us. Mm -hmm. But when we got like, I guess teenagers, I guess she just said fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, pr pretty much the way we dressed too, we didn't look like we're like friendly or anything, uh, even though we're just two idiots. But fucking just dressed in all black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like that's the like like growing up in New Mexico, that was like the the biggest things that we were always worried about was getting kidnapped. Yeah, it was never like getting into fentanyl or anything like that. It was always just make sure you're not gonna get kidnapped or yeah ran over because that. The biggest things back then were kidnapping and DWIs. Yeah, uh, DWI, yeah. There's a lot of hit and run for like kids playing in the yeah. road. To get, I remember a bunch of stories like that. Mm -hmm. And my cousin died like that too. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. There's so many like instances where like like DWI is the worst like thing in New Mexico. There's because there's people that have like 15 and yeah. they're still out. Like yeah, they're still driving and shit and still uh, doing stuff like. Yeah, and, and that's the fucked up part about it is, like, they're still putting people at risk. And, you know, our justice system in New Mexico sucks so much. It sucks whether it's to doing the, the initial investigation part, the court systems, or the, the you know, the, the jail systems. Mm -hmm. That shit sucks. You know, I've, I've seen it all. I, I've seen, you know, the investigation parts. I've seen people go through court, and I've seen people come out of jail and say, this shit's fucked, you know? And that's, like, the one thing here in New Mexico that, you know, a lot of these people are coming from out of other states because, you know, it's affordable here or whatever, but the reasons why it's affordable, nobody wants to listen to. You know, nobody wants to take into consideration that we're in a high-crime place right now, and in the state alone, not just Albuquerque, but the whole state is full of high crimes. I mean, we've got cartels here, we've got gangs here, we got... I'm pretty sure there's sex trafficking rings here. Pretty sure. You know, there's everything that you can think of in New Mexico. And all everybody ever talks about is the fucking landscapes. And I don't know, like, how beautiful it looks yeah, here. Yeah, and, like, the old time, the old town and shit. It's like, uh, what's so, what's more important? Like, the people, the the, the crimes, or the, 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 the historic? 
Yeah, it's just, I think they just do that just for, like, tourist attractions, mm-hmm. just so the well, state's still making money. Yeah, exactly, because, I mean, like, Atlanta's not going to say, hey, yeah, exactly. we're the number one murder yeah. you know, city in the world. No, well, fuck no. Come see a dead body today. You no, know, yeah. like, what's their biggest thing is they got the biggest airport. Like, yeah. that's their number one attraction is the biggest airport in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes being in an airport. No, fuck no. <laughs> like, like, fuck that. It fucking sucks being in an airport. I hate airplanes, and to this day, I refuse to get on one because the last time <laughs> we went on one. That's we the last went, time I've been on one, man. We went to California. We had planned a trip to um, fucking um, Universal's um, Scary Nights. Yeah, hor- Halloween Horror Nights. Uh, horror Nights. <laughs> Scary, Scary Nights. nights. <laughs> <It's not okay. laughs> so we, were, we had planned to go there. And when we had flown from New Mexico to California, we had a, a detour in Phoenix. And when we got to Phoenix, everything was fine. It was just hot as fuck. Like, when we got out of the terminal, you yeah, literally yeah. walked through that gate. Yeah, because we had a connecting flight. Yeah, it know. was so fucking hot. And Immediately, then, yeah, it was like fucking hot as the fuck. And we waited for like what, an hour? An I think hour it was like half? an hour for yeah. our next flight. Yeah. And then, so we jumped on our plane to was it Oxnard. Uh, fuck, I don't even know what airport we landed in. It wasn't the main one. No, no, no. It was uh, oh, what the fuck is it called? Jesus. I thought it was Oxnard. I don't know, something like that. Because oh, I know there's two main airports like in that area. There's one that the one that we got off is near Long Beach. Yeah. Uh, it's not Long Beach Airport. No, it was like oh, it's Ontario. Ontario. Yeah, yeah Ontario is where we went. Yeah, and then <laughs> fuck the touchdown was fucking scary. As fuck. So <laughs> when we were touching down, the fucking shake. The the plane was already going like this. We were experiencing turbulence. And I had I had told this guy. I was like, I have a bad feeling about this shit. We're gonna land. I said, this cop is gonna fucking happen. And right as soon as we were getting ready to touch down, we literally the plane turned like this. And we touched down, we skated, and we went straight. And I remember looking out the fucking window and looking at Tim. I was like, we're going to die, dude. Yeah. We're going to fucking die. Yeah, I literally like fishtail <laughs> like that. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? That's never happened to me on an air- nope. on a airplane. I was like, uh-uh. what the fuck? Yeah, it was like that. Like, it felt like, like, like when you take off in your car. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, when you fishtail. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what it was. But you're in a fucking plane, plane. that's going roughly about 300 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Landing. Yeah. Fucking. <laughs> fucking. Freak uh, the fuck out of me, man. Like, because the first landing was smooth. Yeah. On the other plane, and that one fucking. That was perfect. And then, but when we got, even when we were on our way back, because on our way back to New Mexico it was a one way. Yeah. And when we got over Arizona, there was like a pocket of air we hit, and we dropped like, yeah, was it fifty feet? I, think so. I remember, <laughs> I just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I was just remember just putting on my headphones, like trying to freak out. And, uh, contemplating if I want to break my sobriety at that point. We're just holding each other crying. <laughs> well, I felt like it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck. That, yeah, and uh, that was what, 2019? Yeah. Yeah, that was the last time I've been on a fucking airplane. <laughs> and my fiance wants to go everywhere. She wants to go to Vegas. She wants to go to California, Seattle. Oh. And I'm like, we're driving. And she's like, I don't got, I don't, we don't have time to drive. And I was like, we're driving. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> or, or train. That's the only way I'll travel. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like, I've been wanting to go on vacation, too. Mm-hmm. Fucking, um... Shall be in Seattle fucking in May. Yeah, that'd be fucking... That's sick. Yeah, I've never been to Seattle. I've wanted, I always wanted to go there since uh, I was a kid. So, that's fucking... That's something that fucking badass shit. Well, it's good to start oh, right. <laughs> you guys are... You, know, you guys driving the whole West Coast, right? Yeah, it's a West Coast tour, yeah. It's like going through Colorado and, like... Uh, what the fuck is that? Oregon or some shit? And all the way through there and then back down like that. Yeah. So if there's any of our audience that is out there in California or Oregon, Washington area, you know, follow I official mm-hmm. on Instagram and then I official on TikTok too or no? Uh yeah, so I yeah, it's all I think all of it's like I own official. If you go to our t- our Instagram, the link is in yeah. our bio too. Make sure you check out their dates, their tour dates, so you can catch Joe on tour. Mm-hmm. You can come rob me or... Oh, oh god damn. <laughs> No. Yeah. Uh, or you can... I don't know. Just play fight. No, play fight. Play <laughs> fight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get let's get to the first one that you were looking at. Yeah. So, the the the, the main story today is going to be about uh, Teresa Reyes. Um, and the reason why this caught my attention was because 
uh, mental health is a big issue, not only with me, but, you know, nowadays, it's a big issue, and uh, this young lady here, um, she was 17 around the time she went missing, and um, unfortunately, she did have, suffer from mental health issues, um, so, of course, you know, with that, it always plays a factor in you know disappearances or whatever um and unfortunately that was something that um pretty much pushed back investigations and such um to find miss miss reyes um and you know that that's the 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 thing i wanted to talk about is that if you know if you do suffer from bipolar adhd depression uh, autism or anything like that you know um don't feel like you're alone out there there's a lot of people who do suffer with that and there's a lot of people who are open to you know just being a part of your guys' lives because they understand how troubling and how some of you may um may um have trouble with, um, you know, being a normal part of society, I would say. That's what a lot of people mm-hmm. call it. It's, you know, being a normal part of society, but that's not what it is. It's just, you know, people don't understand that other people are fucking different, you know. But anyways, coming back to the story, <laughs> um, this young lady, um, it was around 2000 and around 2006 2004 between that time um this lady went missing and the the reason why like this topic or this is brought up today is because it deals with how new mexico is really known for latency and putting um yeah i guess putting boots to ground um hard work and and dedication to their actual job you know this young lady she went missing you know in july of 1988 you know 98 oh no yeah sorry 1990 and you know her body wasn't found until 2009 so you can you imagine going through 11 years of of being what the fuck looked for and all that yeah, eleven years. Fifth, yeah, she didn't return home for fifteen years. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, fifteen years then. Yeah. Well, it was probably yeah because from reading this article, and you can find it on the uh, Land of Entrapment dot blog. This uh, this article stated that she was with her cousin, and her cousin and her were uh, walking uh, down on Candelaria, and they were approached by uh, some individuals in a brown van and the individuals that were described were, you know, your typical gangbangers, you know, the shaved heads, tattoos all over their body, khaki pants, you know, solid colored shirts. And <clears throat> they were invited, two individuals were invited to go party with uh, the group of guys. And so, you know, the the... The person she was with, her name was Tiffany Cedillo, and that was her cousin. Her cousin uh, was more mentally mature than her. So, and she, her being the younger one, she always kind of like had to, to take care of her cousin. Mm. So she was basically the one with more of a, a conscious thought and stuff going on. So when those men approached her, the, the the younger cousin didn't really want to uh, initiate any conversation or even approach them, but she wanted to talk to them because mm. they were like catcalling them. Yeah, okay. So they she went over there and they were talking and you know it came down to her getting the guy's number from him and and you know holding that number. And the reason why I bring up that number is because the what took them so long to figure out like what went wrong was that she had hid that um the number in the teddy bear mm. she had put it in her teddy bear and the the cousin had told the cops that 
the guy gave her her number, the number, yeah. and that you just have to look for that number and hopefully you'll find that guy. And for the longest time, for like six months, the cops didn't take the mom seriously. That she was, they just told her that she was a runaway. Yeah, that she's probably on they central. Do that. Yeah, oh. she's probably on central selling herself and such. God, damn. That's exactly what God, they said. Damn, no, like, you're, sorry, your daughter's a whore. Like, yeah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's like what the fuck? Sorry, but you know, she's on her back. Making like with money, no you know? information at all. Yeah, just like, that's basically yeah. what the cops had told her, and you know. She went to, you know, of course she went to APD, you know, the, you know, we all know how that goes. And then she went to the mayor and the FBI and that wasn't going nowhere, you know what I mean? Like, so finally, six months later, they decided to uh, at least take some consideration and start looking into the investigation and such. After she went missing mm-hmm. for even longer. Yeah. And, and like, it, it went to the point to where, like... They were questioning the cousin about, like they thought maybe she yeah, had maybe she knew about what was her whereabouts and such, and that she was just keeping it a secret. And then it came to find out that uh, a man in a field on, in Hamas, the in Pueblo, Hamas? yeah, oh, in Hamas sure. Pueblo, had found her skull in his field. God damn! They just dumped her there. Yeah. So. They yeah, found they that far. Just yeah, dump her body. They found her in 2009. Damn. Yeah, that's when they found her body. She went missing in 1998. Damn, she was yeah, she's been there for a minute. Huh? Yeah. So that's how long it took for her to be found and for an in, the investigation to come to the conclusion that she was it was a homicide. Damn, they drove far with a body in you know, the yeah. out there. Yeah, cuz from ca- yeah. from from basically middle of Albuquerque to Hamas is about like an hour and fifteen, yeah, hour and thirty minutes. Yeah, it's about yeah, it's about that long. Uh, I'm not traveling that far with a body in your trunk. Yeah, th- th- that's that's fucking gross. Like, I mean, I I don't know. I can't. I couldn't. To me, I can personally put myself there and say like I. I would know because I don't know. Like I like you think about it. This kind of sick. Like, yeah. Almost like. Like, you get that weight on your shoulders, like, for a second. It's like, oh, like, what the fuck? Like, how do these guys, like, are okay with? Yeah. Like, like yeah. Like, because, I mean, you've been around funerals, and you know how that shit works. Yeah. But, like, knowing that you're responsible for yeah. that person's demise, like. Yeah, I'm thinking you got away with it. Yeah. For, like, ever. Like, how many years passed? Like, like fucking 15 to 18 years around there. Like or 11 to 15 yeah. years, because. Yeah, 15 years, yeah. Mm-hmm. Imagine those guys probably thought they got. Did they catch him or no? Uh, no. No, so they got away with it. Yep. Fucking fucks. Yep. Yeah, nothing. So on Saul then. Yep. Nothing That's happened. Sad. And and, uh, you know, they were just thinking maybe that, um, throughout the years that you know how people are doing the, um, twenty three me and stuff like that, that. Uh, a hit would come because they did find DNA on her body, but nothing came to it. It's crazy because almost all the evidence is gone because it's been sitting there. Yeah, there. because when they found her skull, they said it was like some, sun bleached yeah. and missing its mandibles, so its, its teeth and like yeah, it was so. almost nothing left pretty much yeah. to like identify anything. I'm surprised they even found out it was her. Yeah, that's crazy. It's fucking shitty. Yeah, but all they found was her skull and a and a bone and a, a leg bone. Mm, sorry, Teddy. Uh, mm-hmm. It's fucking shitty. And, and that's one thing too. Like I said, like you know, if you're if you're suffering or you, your kids are suffering from mental health mental health health issues, you know, there's a lot of people that are that there's a lot of resources yeah. and people that are willing to help out. Yeah, and especially like if. You know that you have a cousin or something that's too trusting with people, like, watch them. Because, like, it, that's usually what happens is that they trust people or they're just, like, they don't think that there's that danger out there. Yeah. And it, it there is, like, like if I have a daughter, but, like, treat everybody like they're, they're going to hurt you. Yeah. Like, it's a shitty way to live, but it's, like, it's just how it is. Mm-hmm. And I, that's always one thing I've always thought about, too, is, like, when I bring a kid into this world, how... How would I bring them up and say, like, you know, be a kind person, but don't be a trustful person? You know, you know what I mean? Like, don't yeah. over trust people, you know, always have yeah. a concern. Always, you know, 
always have like look behind you you know what i mean like mm-hmm. always be aware of your surroundings because i'm that type of person where if i go to a restaurant i'll look at every point of the matter to where if something was to go wrong i can make sure we get this way we go out this way and get out of the way as fast as we can you know what i mean that's that's a shitty thing about like having to always live like that is there's always like constant especially fucking, living here yeah it's like there's been shootings in like places you never thought there would be like <laughs> like on the west side this side used to be the nice part of yeah. town and now it's kind of going down shitter i mean and then not only that but like usually i'm not trying to talk shit you know what i mean like usually the homeless people would be from i-40 down south more now it's everywhere now it's even it's all the way up to like tramway mm-hmm. and second street now mm-hmm. or and, and you know alameda they, they, there was really not that much homeless yeah. people there. it's pretty much was downtown and like war zone area yeah and now it's fucking everywhere, everywhere yeah and and right now like where i'm staying in my apartments you know there's they won't say it but there's been instances of dumbass kids playing in the ditch right on the outside of my <laughs> apartment building area they're fucking shooting guns in that ditch and you hear it going off and you know what i mean like what one day what if one ricochets and comes yeah, straight towards yeah. my balcony yeah, you know? or they're just just shooting wherever you know yeah and, and, and that's the crazy thing is because you know not only is there a building there or apartment buildings but there's a fucking like construction site right next to it so like they're in between both, and it's all it takes is one stray bullet. Yeah, it's all it is. Yeah, man. and then, you know what I mean, like, and to those young people who watch us and stuff like that, like, stay away from that shit. Like, mm-hmm. don't be dumb. Like, there's so much shit that you guys could be doing, so much stuff that you guys could be learning. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys could do this stuff. You guys could go out and do anything you guys want. Just don't be a fucking idiot and, yeah. and start doing that shit. I'm trying to like, oh, I'm cool, you know, just have a gun. You yeah, know, like, mm. it's so fucking dumb. It, uh, it's annoying, and you know how many kids ruin their lives like that? They either kill some one of their friends on accident, and then they get into prison and they waste their whole lives in yeah. prison. It's just, uh, just fine. Just be a kid. It's cool being. It's fine being a kid. Mm. Just be a kid because when you get older, it's. You kind of wish you were a kid still. <laughs> yeah, fucking A. <laughs> and, and another thing, too, is like, and those of us who are older, you know, don't bring your cousins around. You know, don't don't bring them around. Don't bring your little brothers around. You know, just leave them be. Let them fucking live. You know what I mean? If you guys want to break the cycle, that's where it starts. Yeah, and then teach them, like, guns are, you got to respect guns. Yeah. It's not a toy. Yeah. Like, I, I'm a gun owner. But I'm a, I am consider myself a responsible gun, gun owner. You know, it's, it, my, the guns I use are either for, for hunting or if worse comes to worse, home defense. Well, let's, let's switch gears. Yeah. <laughs> this is sad. No, it's, <laughs> it's fucked up. Well, well but, uh, but yeah, uh, we'll probably bring up another case or something like that. And maybe we'll get dive into it and try to see, like, Maybe we have theories of like like who we think did it, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it sucks for her family and stuff. Uh, fuck. Yeah, like and, and like I I got a little emotional and I was looking at her. Yeah, because like, I mean, the story, dude, she's only seventeen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she never lived the like life yeah. life to the fullest. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because she would have been like how old now? Like she she was seventeen when she when she disappeared. When disappeared. So, so that was what, so fi- plus fifteen years. So, so seventeen plus fifteen. She was thirty-two years old. Damn, she would have been my age. Yeah. No, that's no. not right. No, seventeen plus fifteen. So twenty. What the fuck? That doesn't make sense. No, because ninety-eight. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. No, because well, that's twenty-four years. That's twenty twenty-six years. Oh no, yeah, I'm stupid. I'm thinking about twenty two thousand. Oh yeah. So you gotta. 26 plus 17, that's what, 40, 43? Yeah, so, yeah, fucking A. That's, yeah. that's crazy. Because she probably would have had her own family and everything. Yeah, you know, she could have probably had grandkids. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's the crazy thing is, like, you you don't think about those those what-ifs, you know. You just see this case and you're like, wow, another person, you know. Yeah. But then you don't really think about, like, 
what did her family go through? What did, what did all this shit that happened? Like the what ifs. Right. So fuck, I'm trying to get. I know. I'm, I'm trying, how do we switch gears? Without being like, <laughs> fucking a, like sorry guys. Yeah. I fucking got pretty emotional. Yeah. I, I kind of got bothered because I, I started picturing like my, our own family members. Mm-hmm. I was like, fuck, that happened. To, like us. Like fuck, I don't even know. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm like. I couldn't even picture it. So just take care of yourself, take care of your family, and watch your surroundings. That's the biggest thing yeah. if we can come from this. I'm, you know what's weird? Like I like we we've been doing this for a while, but like hearing like if we ever heard like a fan something happened to them or something, it'd be kind of fucking shitty. You know? Yeah. Like even if we didn't really know you personally, but knowing that you watch the show and stuff, mm-hmm. that'd be really fucking upsetting. Yeah. But um. Anyway, I don't even know where to go after this. I don't know what the fuck. Um, <laughs> I don't want to end on that note. Yeah. Or just like, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, uh, fuck. Uh, he just made us cry, and then he get logging off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck, man. Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh, that's the, the, the um, one of the topics we like talking about is, you know, true crimes mm-hmm. and shit. We can do anything. You, you fuck <laughs> that picture on your Facebook. <laughs> fucking, um. Not that one, the one. Oh, it Jeff just Hardy? remind me of fucking Vince McMahon's allegation. Oh yeah, yeah. I fucking saw that. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. He was like forcing women to fuck, like uh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then yeah. the reason why it came out was because he failed to pay the person who was yeah. supposed to keep and, the NDA yeah, hush money. Yeah, because she didn't. She was supposed to get paid three million to keep her mouth shut, and she only got a million yeah. and hadn't got the rest of it. So she opened her mouth about it. Yeah. And then now he resigned. Yep. And yeah. everything. Yeah, I guess she was. Yeah, he, he, and <laughs> she said that. I guess during a threesome with her involved, that uh, he actually defecated. He shit. He, you? He shit himself. What the fuck? And it got in her hair. She told that story. What the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> like what the fuck is like? What the? Oh, fuck he is? nutted so well. He fucking shit himself. Yeah, I guess. Or they pull a butt plug out. Or oh, what the fucking, fuck? Yeah. Oh, fucking not, Roger. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, bro. Yeah, I was like, yeah, what the fuck? Like, I saw that shit. Like, I saw memes about him, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then, Like, that always makes me think about that that quote. They always say, don't meet your heroes. Mm -hmm, Yeah. Like, you're better off not meeting your heroes. It's true, because, like, uh, I've, I've, like, because I've played with some bigger bands before, like, we'll be open up for them. Yeah. Uh, Fuck, I don't want to say their name, but I've opened for this band before, and if you know what bands we've done, it's one of them. But uh, the whole band was kind of like, like assholes. And I actually liked their music, but after that night, I haven't listened to their music since. We opened up for them, and then they played their set. And then after the set, I went up to the singer. I was like, dude, sick set, man. I, I, you guys are fucking badass. I went like that, and he just looked at me and just like fucking w- just walked uh-huh. away. I was like, and me, I'm not like, I don't just like, you know, get it quiet. I was like, all right, well, fuck me, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, and then and then he Cameron was behind me coming like not we were together, but he did the same thing. He was all nice show, and he's like, and then just walked past Cameron too, huh. and then and then we're trying to talk to the guitarist, and he was just didn't really want to talk to us. It was just kind of like blowing us off. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, it's true. Don't meet your heroes, man. Huh. But uh, and ever since that, I've been nervous to for meeting other bands that I like. We opened up for Skeletal Remains. I was so nervous for meeting them. Huh. I was like, please don't be an asshole. Please don't be an asshole. <laughs> and I talked to them. They were talking to us for pretty much the whole night because uh, they're actually still the guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And that, I always thought about like, like, what if I ran into this person? Like, you know what I mean? And like, I, I've ran into famous people here in New Mexico. Like, not like famous, famous, but I mean like New Mexico famous. Like, I ran into Johnny James. You know, he's a, a cool cat. From what I, from what I experienced meeting him, you know, not with in front of a camera, not with him filming or anything, I met him at fucking fucking Sam's Club, and I went up to him and I just said, "What's up? Hey, you know, cool." He treated me with respect. I treated him with respect, and that's how it was. You know what I mean? Like, I asked for a picture. I didn't go up and run to him and be like, "Hey, you know, I'm fucking." fucking weird. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's not how you do that shit. And you know what I mean? Like, I was nervous as fuck to meet him because you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like they say. You're better off not meeting those people because yeah. you're gonna your opinion of them is gonna change. Yeah, it's like like Michael Jordan. There's so many bad stories about him being yeah, an like Michael Jordan who's just a fucking prick. Yeah, and like everybody thought Kobe was the same way, but he's actually yeah. the nicest yeah. Yeah. guy yeah. in the fucking world. <laughs> it's like the opposite of Michael. Yeah, and, and that, that like that's the thing is like 
you know, I hope you guys understand that if you guys meet us or if you guys see us out there in town or whatever. You're fucking asshole. You know, oh, we're don't assholes. be afraid oh, to approach us and say, you know, whatever you have to say. You know what I mean? Like, and if it's, if it's, you know, criticism, then let it be. But, you know, just know that it's. It's literally going to go in one ear and not the other. You know what I mean? Like, because things that we notice what works for us and we notice what doesn't work for us. Yeah. If you meet me in public, I'm probably going to be more nervous to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I get super like, like, oh, shit, you know who I am? Like, yeah. Like, hi, I don't know what, how to act. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> for a minute there, getting noticed, you know, uh, for being cloud nine was kind of scary there. Uh, cause you, I'd go to like other pueblos and watch them dance and stuff and chef, you know what I mean? Like you're the guy that smokes weed. You're like, yeah, like don't we all, <laughs> but you know, that's, that's one thing too, is that if you guys see us outside, you know, you guys want us to, you know, take a picture with us or whatever, go for it. Mm-hmm. You know, don't yeah. don't be. I'm gonna afraid. charge you. I'm gonna charge you. Yeah. No, I'm not a no, dick like that. that. Some people do that yeah. shit too. That's crazy. Huh. Like I get it. Like if you're like at a like a convention or like a comic con or something, then yeah. it makes sense because like that's how they make their money. Mm-hmm. Because I know like some cel- the celebrities they like, charge like twenty bucks for like. Bro, the fucking Bam Margera was charging forty five dollars for a picture, sixty dollars for a fucking autograph. I fucking believe it. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, holy, and that was just Comic Con like this just a few week. Days ago, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, just like yeah, last weekend. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they do that shit. Yeah, it's just like I get it. Because, like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't really have any other way of income because yeah. he's not part of the jackass thing anymore. No, fuck, man. He isn't. I, I watched that whole thing. That Yeah, he's been fucking <laughs> in and out of rehab and doing crazy shit, man. Yeah. So that that's, like, crazy shit. You know what I mean? Like, damn. Yeah, even Steve-O, he's crazy and he doesn't want to hang out with him. No. Uh-uh. Like, that's how crazy Bam is. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like I, I get it. I, I get it with his, like, it's more I I mean I get it's like more he tried like, helping him yeah because like he gets like because he was an addict too yeah and like he knows like I know what you're thinking yeah I know what you're going through. Yeah. yeah and so it's like but he doesn't want the help so. no fuck it. I mean when you when somebody's down that slope you know what I mean like your best bet is to offer how be supportive but don't kill yourself trying to yeah it's, change them. Yeah, they have to make that choice yeah. themselves or else it'll never happen. Yeah, because you don't want to waste your life waiting for someone to come around and they end up dying. Mm-hmm. Like, that's something that, you know, you can be concerned about, you can be worried about, but at the end of the day, you have a life to live too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And if they choose that over, you know, whatever relationship you guys have or relationships they have going on, then that's on them. You know what I mean? Like, there's just some, so much that you can take. And don't don't let so much pile up on your plate because at the end of the day you're gonna end up fucking stressing out yeah addiction sucks <laughs> regardless if it's drugs yeah, or anything it yeah because yeah. there's more types of addiction than we yeah, think there's like blood. there's all kinds of sex addiction fucking anything really people that have to be online all the time that's an addiction yeah, like, games yeah as long as it's like a, ne- a negatively impacts your life <sighs> those are the addictions you don't want Shit, did you guys did you hear about that guy that hacked the GTA six servers uh-uh. and tried to uh, blackmail uh, Rockstar? Really? For thirty two million dollars? Like to leak shit. Yeah. Yeah, what the fuck? And he literally did it with a fire stick and a phone. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Dude, like that's gotta be some crazy shit being able to do that. Hack into like a, one of the biggest Oh shit. Yeah, because I heard you can do it if you put a virus on that thing yeah. and you plug it into the computer and it starts automatically doing like giving you like codes and stuff. Huh. And you can actually remotely do that from wherever the fuck you're at. Shit. It's crazy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I I remember back in the day writing code like on the computer, but shit, things have changed so much nowadays that I don't yeah. even fucking bring... No. Yeah. <laughs> we should become hackers, bro. Oh, hackers, oh, uh, like, I don't even know what the fuck I would do, anyways. Yeah, like, I know how to hack, but uh, uh, it doesn't sound like anything. I want to do. <laughs> they always get caught, anyway. Yeah, I was gonna say the only thing that'd be worth hacking for would be like just making sure I could have fucking rent. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because uh, you, when you go big, bigger with for yeah, more yeah, amounts yeah. of money, that's when you, yeah, you get caught. Yeah, <clears throat> you get caught. Yeah. So I mean, I'd yeah. still like 
sixty hundred bucks every now and then. Oh, shit. <laughs> and you're a little tight on some fucking rent money. No and... shit. <laughs> I'll be like, hold on. Oh, oh Mrs. Uh, Hines. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that that's just fuck. You know, I, like, there's so much crazy stuff going on with everything, regardless of what it is. Do you think we could get away with murder? No. I don't think so. Like, how would you do it? <sighs> If I became a murderer, I'd probably, it'd probably have to be someone random. Yeah, you ha- it, has to yeah. Be, it has to be, because you, if you do someone that you're related to, dating, or uh, talk, family, or anything, it, it somehow yeah. it's going to lead to you. That'd be, like, the number one thing, make sure it's random. Yeah. Probably be in a state or area where I'm not tied into. Yeah. Like, I don't have any, like... Yeah, because those are the ones that it's so hard to attach you to, because yeah. it's like, they're like, well, who the fuck, like, it's just... So you're not even there, you yeah. know. Like, you, like, of course, throw your phone yeah. away. Yeah. And then we'll have no phone on you at all. Anything that's electronic, throw yeah. it away. Yeah. Because um, yeah, because they can track where your yeah, location o- was. Always keep cash on you. Never use a card. Mm-hmm. And fuck. FBI coming right now. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else. Like, what be the major thing? You make sure you always like wear gloves. Yeah, gloves, like, <laughs> fuck, but it's scary because when you watch those, like, forensic files, like, just, like, a fiber off your jacket. They yeah, fucking A, dude, yeah. like, I, I've seen that shit, too, like, I was watching one the other day, and the reason, the, the way they caught the guy is because his sweat, when he was committing the act, he sweat, and his sweat droplets landed on the counter, oh, and damn. when they were doing the, the dusting, that's yeah. when they found it, and they took it samples, yeah. and that's how they found it, because his brother did the... The 23andMe thing, yeah. and they did, like, I guess it came back in Codex or whatever they use, yeah. and it said that there was a match, but it wasn't 100%. It was, like, it was like I don't know how they explain it, but they explain it to where it's enough of a match, but it's not a match of that specific person. It's yeah. that person's gene line. Yeah, oh, okay. So, yeah, so it's, like, family members. That's crazy, yeah. So yeah. they're like, it's part of this family, but we don't know who's yeah. in the family. So then they, of course, once they do that, they go back and they look at, like, histories of all the, like, oh, yeah, the like crimes. Criminals. Yeah. yeah. And and that's how they base it on. Yeah. Like, I remember there was one where, there's a few of them where, I guess, they had the body in the trunk, took it out, and then just, there was just, like, one lone fiber that was from, like, the carpet that was in his trunk. Yeah. And there was, it was on her body. And then that's how they linked it to his car. Yeah, that's and fucking like, insane. Huh? That's why it's like, you have to like, pretty much anything you use that day, you just burn it. Like, yeah, like, you just gotta fucking like... If, and skin uh, yourself. Huh? <laughs> Shit! You gotta be bald. <laughs> oh, you better get waxed out all completely. Uh, <laughs> wear fucking plastic everywhere. <laughs> no, it's, like, it's like little things they don't even know. Like It's crazy because like, yeah, that's why there's still serial killers now, but it's like... Oh, did you hear about the Zodiac killer? They finally named the fucker? Oh really? Oh yeah. yeah, I think some yeah, someone finally figured out who it was. Yeah, and it was some dude literally posted on his Twitter or Instagram saying, um, chilling with the Zodiac. Like he literally had pictures of him oh, the with fuck? the killer. Oh shit. Yeah, and he was just like posed like that. The guy was tall. So but he guy. was like, yeah, he was like taking pictures with him. And it's crazy because when they took that image of him, they they put it against that image of the drawing. Yeah. And they, he had that fucking thing on oh, his really? forehead. Yeah, that scar. Yeah. So that's how they knew it was him. What the fuck? And that guy wrote a book about it and everything. He told the cops about it. And from my understanding, <laughs> if I read the the article right, he told the cops about it and, and they everything. Didn't believe and nah. it. They just thought he was like some mm-hmm. dude trying to get credit for the Yeah. Guy. So then he ended up, his book went like mainstream now and he's, it's going crazy. We're, that's crazy. Yeah, and it's all because, like... If you guys want the Zodiac Killer on the show... Oh, we'll, dig- <laughs> oh, we'll dig him up and oh, we'll put him we'll, on record. Oh, we'll, get, we'll put his urn... Oh, 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 <laughs> we'll put the fucking Ram Pot and <laughs> fucking the spear box in front of it. Oh. Did you do it? Me, 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 me. Oh, oh, yeah. Maybe. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and it starts floating. Oh, oh, oh. the fuck? Yeah. fuck that'd be sick shit. We're like, holy shit. Oh. Spin that shit. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> You see his body come out and all oh, that. Oh, fuck, like the mummy when he opens those yeah, pin open fucking doors. Yeah, fucking it. <laughs> fucking shit. Oh, fuck. Like that and like, um, what the fuck is the other one? Um, the, it, it was just, 
the Dom, of course, the Dahmer thing last year about that whole Netflix movie coming out, and it was a oh, yeah, thing people too. are like, yeah, like oh, you guys are glorifying him, yeah, like, you guys are, yeah, like, like, like he's like a, yeah, just he's they, more of a celebrity yeah. now than he is a murderer. Yeah, was, like, there, was there people like buying those glasses? And yeah, stuff? dude, people were actually like yeah, the Dahmer glasses, yeah, yeah, like trying to like. There was even some dude on TikTok that was like, he called himself Dahmer of TikTok, but he was just doing like random shit but dressed as Dahmer it was like fuck? yeah like so people shit. were saying that that's like the weirdest shit ever like yeah. like I was just watching another one like I have this weird thing where I watch true crime I watch people who were in prison you know old stories like that but I was watching this true crime one and this guy had um what what the basis of the story was this lady went missing and um the way it turned out was the guy had approached his um, neighbor and asked him, hey, I think his name was Steve. Hey, mm-hmm. Steve, where's your backhoe? And he's like, like, what the fuck? Like, why, why are you worried about my backhoe? He's like, mm-hmm. it's it's on on site. I won't mm-hmm. have it for a few days. And he's like, fuck. You know, like, and he's like, why? He's like, because I wanted to hide the evidence. And you know, like, the guy thought he was just fucking with yeah. him. So he's like, so he... Thought he was fucking with him, and, but the guy pointed a flashlight at white buckets. Buckets. Was white <laughs> white uh, five gallon buckets. Yeah. So, you know, like, that joke was really like fucking with him. Mm. Like, he didn't know if he was telling the truth or not. So he ended up going down to the police station at like 9 30 at night, and the guy showed him about 6 37. So <clears throat> he said he couldn't sleep. So he went down to the, the cop station and the cops were just basically blowing him off, saying, like, you know, you just got to come back tomorrow, and then we'll figure it out then. Uh, but he's like, no, like, this is some serious shit. I need you to figure this out now. Mm-hmm. So the guy listened to his story, and so they they called the detective, and they, they called another uh, uniformed officer to take the guy back to his house and do some investigation. <clears throat> so, um, they, of course, they did it, un, you know, in the dark. You know, try not to make any noise or anything. So what they did was they got a rake from that guy's yard. They went all the way around and they they picked up one of the white buckets. And when they opened it, they found a a, a dismembered head and hands. Oh shit! So that's when they backed up and they called you know for warrants and shit. And mm. when they arrested him, they found out he ate her. Oh fuck! And the 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 he ate the, the like the back strap is what he called it. Yeah. And if anybody doesn't know what a backstrap is, it's like the most prized part of the like the animal, the deer or I guess deers, uh, I mean, elk or whatever. Humans, yeah, apparently. Uh, apparently, <laughs> but it's that like long stretch of meat that goes from the top of the vertebrae to the bottom, and it's yeah. really tender. It's really good. But anyways, so I, he was telling the, the the detectives that he ate that part, he cooked it, and he ate a part of her leg and it mm. tasted like charred boiled steak is what he said okay. and and so the reason why he's telling the cop this is that so he can get um what we call it, considered insane oh okay yeah. you know he can uh claim uh mental health issues or yeah. whatever so throughout the interview he kept reminding the 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 cop that he wasn't there like something was mm. telling him to do it and stuff and you know after watching the video i brought up the comments and somebody had made an interesting comment like why the, why does everybody have to blame the, the devil or a demon yeah like what if there was no such thing as the bible and there was no such thing to blame it on yeah like what are we gonna blame yeah what are you gonna blame it on yeah. like people need to stop blaming that shit on on you know things that aren't scientifically proven to be real (laughs) like you know what i mean like that shit like it does make sense like people will do anything they can after they do something like that yeah to try to get out Mm -hmm. they'll do anything yeah and most people that claim insanity man most of them don't get it because it's proven that they're not yeah it's because insane people don't know they're insane yeah and then (laughs) those who are proven like you can clearly tell yeah. there's nothing right yeah here. they think they're normal yeah uh, <laughs> and that's the thing is like it you know watching that whole story it was just like a trip because 
he was a normal dude. He had a fourteen year old guy, a fourteen year old kid. But you know, things happened. Lost his job, got a divorce, moved back into his, with his parents, and then something snapped in him. And then all of a sudden, he kills somebody, and he eats them, dismembers them, becomes a cannibalist. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, oh, maybe I'm. Oh, my parents taste good. You know, oh, uh, weird. Uh -huh. And the crazy thing about it was, that I, if I'm not mistaken, that guy's mother was either a cop or has something to do with that um, police department. Hmm. Because in the interview, the guy had basically stated that I worked with your mom, the hmm. the detective. Yeah. Yeah, I worked with your mom for years. That's weird. So, so like, it was just, like, this big old thing of people, like, like, during of course the time of the trial and stuff like people were saying like he's gonna get out you know no, the, the like, law you know, he was gonna mm -hmm. be behind his sight and stuff but he ended up getting i think life with parole for 40 years or something like that mm -hmm. but he's like almost 50 now so yeah, he would be dying soon be, yeah he's probably gonna die in there yeah Fuck. so like you know if you guys have any interesting topics or stories whether it's about true crime or anything um you know, hit us up in the comments. Mm -hmm. Tell your story. DM us. And, you know, we'll tell your story anonymously or as you, you know. Mm -hmm. We'll put your address on there. Oh, God <laughs> damn. We'll put your name, your face, uh, age. Uh. <laughs> Social security number. God damn. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you guys, you know, have any interesting stories or, um, you know, anything to add to any of these um, cases that we're bringing up, you know, be free to post it in the comments and you know we'll bring it up in the next episode yeah yeah if there's like a case you want us to talk about or something or anything yeah comedy wise well, anything i don't give a shit yeah what it is, whatever honestly. you know <laughs> if you guys want to uh want us to review your music videos or something like that we'll do that too yeah or you want us to start reviewing sex toys well uh, uh, I'm, uh, let's go. <laughs> i'm against insertion Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, I boycott. Oh, oh, boy. What the fuck? Huh? I'm too tight. Oh. I'm too tight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an easy access hole, you know. Oh, oh, no. I wasn't born with one. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm fucking asses gap like that. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, okay. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Oh, I was born with a pinhole hole. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, Everything just slides out. Oh, oh. I shit spaghetti. Oh. What the fuck? <laughs> I shit pasta. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? Ass is Italian. Oh. Oh, ass is Italian. <laughs> 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 ah, ah, that was just... shit. <laughs> Mozzarella. <laughs> <laughs> just like just say like, some random shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, oh shit! Fuck. It smells like garlic. And <laughs> what the fuck? Garlic and tomatoes? Oh, oregano. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that what's disgusting about it is that I can picture that smell because I know what that smell yeah. is like. Constantly working with pizzas, yeah. You know what that shit smells like? <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, olive oil. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. I don't know. I was gonna say something. And I totally messed up. I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll call it right there. Yeah. Uh, I think we've been like an hour and a half. Uh, I think. Guarantee it's been more than at least an hour. Yeah. yeah. But uh, thanks for watching the Pitch Dark again. Uh, yeah. Hopefully the next one will be a little lighter of a topic. Yeah. <laughs> it got really dark there. Oh, pitch Dark. Yeah. So I did contact the individual. He is down to still do the interview. Oh, I thought you were talking about the family. Oh, uh, 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 yeah. I contacted them. I was like, holy shit, uh, bro. They're going to be on the show. Oh, no. no, but I did contact the individual. Um and he is gonna he's down to do the show so we're just gonna set the time up and hopefully the next episode will be that episode if not be on the lookout for it um uh tonight yeah i don't know where i was going uh, with that i was gonna say tonight like, joe's what? gonna be at a show but it's not gonna be uploaded until like yeah it's gonna be like next week so yeah <laughs> so don't worry about that but if you guys see any upcoming shows be sure to go check them out you know support your local artists support your local food people just support local you know there's too much uh, saturation of big time franchises and big people out there already it's time to give the little guys a shot i'm your host kyle i'm joey and we're pitch dark see you guys next time
Finger guns. Finger guns. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking put them up. Oh, <laughs> oh they are from Burke. Oh. <laughs> oh. There's true New Mexico. <laughs>